Tommy from Technicians here. In this video, we're gonna be talking about using Bergia Nudibranx as a method of managing Aptasia in your reef tank. Aptasia are by far the worst and the most common coral pests that people get in their aquariums. And the reason for this is that Aptasias have a variety of ways of reproducing, some of which are really sneaky. So they do this thing called pedal budding, where they create this small little packet of cells and then the Aptasia will move across the rock and leave behind those small little packets of cells. Now, these small little packets of cells, they don't look like anything. They're little brown, fairly translucent. You're not gonna notice them. You can buy a coral frag, you can have one of those or multiple of those on there. You won't see that until weeks later, even months later, when it becomes a tiny Aptasia anemone. This is how a lot of people get Aptasias in their aquariums. So we always recommend prevention as the best way of making sure that you're not putting Aptasia in your tank. You do this through diligent quarantine and extended observations. So if you can cut the coral down to as small as possible, put it in an observation tank and make sure that nothing's coming off of it, that's how you're gonna have your best success preventing Aptasia from getting into your aquarium. Now, a lot of reefers aren't able to do that and many of you already have Aptasia in your tank and so you need a method of controlling them. Bergia nudibranx are probably the best one out there. But for a long time, I thought that Bergia nudibranx did not work and they were just a scam because we were breeding them at a store that I was working at previously and we were just giving them away to customers and no one came back telling us that the Bergias had done anything to their Aptasia. But we've learned a lot since then. There's a lot of people now that are breeding Bergias commercially. There's a lot more people that have tried them. There's more forum posts. We learned from a lot of that and have successfully used Bergias to control Aptasia in a number of aquariums. So we're gonna share some tips with you so that you can have the most success using Bergias. So Bergia nudibranx are obligate Aptasia eaters. This means that they eat Aptasia and nothing else. So there's a lot of other potential biological controls for Aptasia, uh, peppermint shrimps, uh, Molly Miller blennies, Aptasia eating filefish, there's a variety of them, but none of them are obligate Aptasia eaters, which means that there isn't even a guarantee that they're going to eat Aptasia. And there's also a fairly high chance that they might nip at some of the corals in your aquarium. A lot of proponents of these other biological methods will place the blame on you if that happens. They'll say, oh, you got your coral banded from the wrong part of the ocean, or you got the wrong species of peppermint shrimp, like they're easy to differentiate, or you didn't feed your fish enough and so they got hungry and they started eating your coral. We're a service company. We service hundreds of aquariums. You get lucky when you employ one of those other forms of biological control and they don't eat something in your tank. Most people end up having a copper band or a file fish or peppermint shrimps eating something in their aquarium and now they have to go and hunt this fish out of their tank or even worse, those shrimps out of their aquarium, which can be very stressful. And so if you have the right environment in your reef tank that you can use Bergias and have them control the Aptasia, that's always what we recommend first. successfully is having a reproduction event in your aquarium. So Bergia nudibranx have a fairly short lifespan. There's only so many Aptasia that they can eat in that short period of time. So what you need to have happen is for the Bergias that you add to your aquarium to find each other, reproduce, lay egg sacs, and then those egg sacs will hatch and an army of baby Bergias will crawl around your aquarium and they'll eat the majority of the Aptasia. In order to make this happen, you need to make sure that your Bergias are at a reproductive age, meaning large enough when you add them. You need to make sure that you have a good enough stocking density of Bergias so they can actually find each other. You need to make sure that you don't have stuff in the aquarium that's going to eat the Bergias before they have the opportunity to do that. And you need to make sure that the environment in your aquarium, the physical environment, the amount of flow that you have, isn't going to just push the Bergias off the rock and chop them up at a power head or get them caught in your mechanical filtration. If you can make sure that all four of those things are met, the Bergias are going to work. So the recommended stocking density for Bergias is one Bergia for every 10 gallons. And if you have a large aquarium, this can be pretty cost prohibitive. Uh, something that we like to recommend for people, even if you don't have a large aquarium, is to set up a little five or 10 gallon tank with a sponge filter and take Aptasia from your reef tank. If there's a little bit of rock behind there as well, 
uh, or on the Aptasia as well. Make sure you dip it really well because you want to make sure you're only adding Aptasia to this tank. You want it to be sterile. You want Bergia, water, and Aptasia in there, and that's it. So stock this tank with Aptasia, and then when you order your Bergias, put them in there. Because a lot of times when you order Bergias, they might say they're half inch, but they come in quarter inch, and that's just way too small to go into a display. So you have this tank where you can uh, grow up the Bergias if they come in too small, and also, even if they come in at an adequate size, you can make sure that they're reproducing before you put them in the tank. Bergias don't need to mate every time they lay an egg case. Once they have a reproduction event, they can lay multiple egg cases. So when you start seeing egg cases in that aquarium, that's when I would recommend taking the Bergias and putting them into your display. Another benefit of this is redundancy. If the first group of Bergias that you put in there don't work, and you learn that you want to try something else, you have another batch of Bergias that are growing, feeding off of those Aptasias that you can then employ and try again. You want to make sure that there's nothing in your aquarium that's going to be eating the Bergias. And this is often why we recommend Bergias as the first method for Aptasia management, because things like peppermint shrimp and copper band butterflies will eat Bergia nudibranchs. And a copper band isn't the hardest thing in the world to catch out of a reef tank, but peppermint shrimps can be near impossible without taking every single rock out of the tank. And even then, they might be hiding deep within a rock. It can be very difficult. So, although peppermint shrimps are cheaper and can sometimes be effective, I usually don't recommend putting them in a reef tank. And if you're going to do so, you need to know that there's substantial risk. Uh, a lot of other things will eat Bergia nudibranchs as well. Very common rats that people put in their aquariums to control coral pests don't know the difference between a beneficial Bergia nudibranch and a detrimental monopora or zoe-eating nudibranch. They'll eat them just the same. So if you have yellow porous wrasses, melanaris wrasses, six-line wrasses, anything like that, you might not have success using Bergias unless you remove those fish. We've gone over the stocking density. Another benefit of setting up your Bergias in a little 10-gallon tank with a sponge filter is that, say you have a 300-gallon tank, you don't necessarily have to buy 30 Bergias. You can buy, you know, 10 or 15 Bergias and get them breeding, and then you can add them and their offspring into the tank, or you'll have a much higher chance of success with less Bergias if they've all started reproducing already, because then, even if they can't find each other, they're still laying egg cases. So setting up that alternative tank, it's not gonna cost you a ton of money. You probably already have a 10 gallon fish tank and a sponge filter lying around somewhere anyway. Uh, can be really helpful if you're gonna try and use Bergias to manage Aptasia. A less common issue that people will come across when using Bergias to control Aptasia is if they have too much flow in the tank. It can physically blow the Bergias off the rocks, get them chopped up in a power head, or have them caught in the mechanical filtration. This isn't very common. This is usually for you know really heavily stocked SPS systems. In these instances, I might recommend that you try lowering your flow a little bit. Um, Bergias aren't terribly delicate you know they, they can stick to a rock pretty well but in a really high energy environment you can just rip them right off uh, this can be difficult to do in an SBS tank especially if it's a really mature one with big healthy colonies if you lower the flow you run the risk of stressing your SBS corals so use your best judgment here as a final note I want to mention that uh, Berkey nudibranchs are not an eradication method for Aptasia as of right now, there are no eradication methods for Aptasia. So what the Bergia nudibranch is gonna do is it's going to manage the Aptasia. If you have enough Aptasia in your aquarium that you can get that reproduction event, and all the, the whole army of baby Bergias go around and they eat as many Aptasias as they can find, you might not see Aptasia for another six, eight months, even a year, but they will eventually come back. We've used this method with a ton of success in a lot of aquariums but it has never eradicated the Aptasia. They always come back. But when they come back, they're now one or two at a time. And so you can go in there and manually control them with things like Kalkwasser, Aptasia X, Aptasia, uh, physical removal, taking the rock out and chipping it and making sure that you get the whole Aptasia. Uh, but eventually, you're likely going to need to re-employ the Bergias. If you're diligent with your management when you don't have as many, you can push this along a year, two years, eventually you're going to have a lot of Aptasias again and it'll be time to run the Bergias again. This is why, again, the best thing that you can do is avoid Aptasias in the first place. And unfortunately, that isn't easy to do. There aren't a lot of quarantine vendors out there. 
and even a lot of these, you know, like upper echelon, top shelf coral sellers, they still have Aptasia and it's very likely that you might get it from them. Even with their high prices and all the talk about their diligent quarantines, uh, the onus really is on you. However, if you are local and would like to purchase some Aptasia free corals, we have an entire 8x3 coral trough of quarantine corals that are ready to go, guaranteed no Aptasia. Thanks so much for watching this video. Really hope that you found it helpful. Hopefully, if you're dealing with Aptasia, these tips will allow you to use Bergias in both a cost-effective and successful way. Please subscribe to our channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more content soon. Hit the bell notification so that you don't miss anything and enjoy this nature clip.